Today we're going to be doing our upper GI. The routine views for an upper GI are PA and REO, but we are going to demonstrate also AP and LPO. This is commonly done, especially for patients who have had gastric bypass surgery or patients who are just elderly or unable for some reason to not lay on their stomach. So I'm going to demonstrate both views for you. Now the technique for the PA and RAO is going to be 117 kV center cell and it will be for the RAO, uh, PA and the RAO and also for the AP and the LPO. Our film size will be an 11 by 14 and it will be lengthwise. Uh, we're going to first start off with the PA view. So we're going to have our patient lay on their stomach and we are going to shield. We are center locked to our, our table and centered to our film. As far as centering goes, we're going to actually we're going to palpate the uh, rib margins, the lower rib margins of the patient. Hopefully they won't be too ticklish for you. And you're going to be centering for an, this is for a stenic patient, an average patient. We're going to center there and then we're going to palpate the spine and we're going to be one about one to two inches or I usually just take it and make it halfway between the spine and the outer margins uh, of the skin here. And that's a good placement then. Your collimation will be to the spine and it will be to the skin margins. And then up and down will be to the IR borders. As far as marker placement goes, we will be using a left marker. We can put it out here to the side. So it's going to be visible but not obstructing anything. Our technique again is 117 kV center cell. And then this is going to be our PA uh, x-ray for uh, an upper GI. Now if you have a patient who is hypersthenic, a hypersthenic patient or a larger patient, the, change, the centering does change. So our centering is going to be from the point we are at, we're going to go approximately two inches higher. And then we're going to go more toward the midline. And we'll have to adjust our collimations to incorporate all the way to the skin margins again. A hypersthenic patient's uh, stomach is a little more transverse. So we have to center a little bit more toward the midline. Now if we have, a, uh, we have an asthenic patient, a patient who is really thin, then our centering changes also. So we're going to go back to where we were, which is at the rib margins, and about halfway in between. Uh, the spine and the outer margins and from that point we are going to center down about two inches. Okay, Still uh, left of the spine but we're also going to be a little lower. Their, their stomach is more a J-shaped uh, stomach so then our collimation will again change somewhat coming into the, the skin margins and again to the IR borders. Now as far as in this position the patient uh, as far as the air bearing relationship here the air will be more in the fundus and the barium will be more in the body and the pylorus in the PA view. So our next position that we're going to do is the REO position for the GI. We're going to have the patient, now the range of obliquity that we can use for this is dependent upon the size of the patient. The range is 40 to 70 degrees. The 70 degrees is more for a hypersthenic patient, the 40 degrees is more for a, uh, just an average uh, patient, a sthenic patient. So we're going to roll to have the ro patient roll up toward the uh, side for me. Okay, there we go. Just making sure that everything is straight down the body. Shoulder and hip are all straight. Now again, we're going to palpate the rib margins. And we're going to be at the level of the rib margins. And then we're going to palpate the spine. And I want to be halfway between the spine and the skin margins of the patient. Now my collimation again will be to the IR borders up and down, but I do want to have collimation all the way to the spine for sure. Now another thing that we're going to be doing on this here is we do still, even the patient, oh, the patient is in an RAO position, the stomach is referenced to the left side, so we will use our left marker. Okay, so I'm using the left marker, putting it in the light field here, okay, and then uh, we're going again making sure that the collimation has gone to the spine and it is to the IR borders. The technique stays the same, 117 uh, center cell. Now as far as what you see in this position, the barium is still going to be in the body in the pylorus, but in this position it also shows the duodenal bulb filled with barium. Very important part that you need to, to remember there. So this position is filled uh, with barium. 
All right, so next position I'm going to show you, we're going to go to the AP position for an upper GI. So I'm going to have the patient, if they would, lay on their back for me. We are still going to shield. Okay. Now, the one thing that people tend to get confused on this, and I want to stress to you, is make sure you know it's the left side. We've been working on this side over here. Well, she has changed and right laying on her back now. The left side is on the opposite side. So when you're doing sound, I know it sounds sort of silly. You think, oh, there's no way I forget, but it is a common problem that students tend to do. So be very conscious of that. Now our centering for this is a little bit different. On this one here, what we're going to do is we're going to palpate the lower margin, the lower margins of the rib, and we also are going to palpate the xiphoid. So that point, about halfway in between that, is where we're going to center. Okay, again, side to side, our centering is going to be to the midline, to the outer margins, we're going to be about halfway. Okay, our collimation will include all the way back to the midline, and it will be to the skin margins on the side. And then I'm just going to use that to put my marker right here in the side so it's not obstructing and it's out of the way. Now, of course, once the patient rolled onto the back, the technique doesn't change. It's still going to be 117 kb center cell. But it does change our air barium relationship. So now with the patient laying supine, the barium is now in the fundus and air is now in the body in the pylorus. Okay? So you need to remember that air barium relationship, it does change. Okay? So if you've got a film, you take a film and you're not sure because the marker is not showing up, you're not sure is this patient prone, is it supine? Uh, you should be able to know that because of the air bearing relationship. So that's one of the things you need to pay attention to. Okay, uh, so now that's our AP view. We're going to go to our LPO position. Now the obliquity changes a little bit. The PA uh, then to the REO it was 40 to 70 degrees, but for the posterior oblique it's going to be 30 to 60 degrees. Still 30 degrees, but it's a little bit less uh, of a rotation than it is for the REO position. So we're going to rotate our patient up about 30 to 60 degrees. Just going to make sure she's all straight. If you would, just lay it back down just a tad bit. I'm going to make the shield back up here again. Now, as far as your centering goes, just a bit. Uh, it's still going to be from the xiphoid to the lower rib margins, halfway. And then you're going to have to take and feel. It's not really correct terminology, but you're going to basically find the new MSP of the patient in the obliquity and the skin margins, and you're going to center halfway in between that. The one thing students tend to do is they want to center too far out, so be conscious of that. Because of the position of the stomach, it's actually you want to make sure that it's not going to be clipped on the back side here. Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. So we're going to find the new MSP about halfway. And then I've got collimation here to the skin margins. We'll go ahead and put our marker in there. And then I'm sure now I'm past the midline, so I do have the entire stomach on it. Now, one thing that happens in this position, again, is the duodenal bulb is in profile. But now it's going to be filled with air, not barium as it was in the aria position. That's one of the things you will have to know which is going to be filled with. It is in profile in both positions, but the LPO position, it is filled with air. Okay? And these are going to be our PA, REO, AP, and LPO views for an upper GI. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, I do want to mention this. When we start the exam, uh, but prior to actually giving the patient barium, we're going to give them some little crystals to drink. Okay? And what they'll do is they'll sort of throw those back, and sometimes we'll give them a little bit of water, let them drink water with it. Uh, sometimes we'll have them drink the barium with it different ways. And what it does, it helps put air in the stomach because they're wanting to see this is uh, they're wanting to see contrast, the air uh, in the relationship to the barium. Double. Okay, and this is this is called an, a double upper GI series is what this is called. So this is going to be our upper GI views uh, for the stomach.